This exhibit talks about the origin of life as life itself is a great mystery for all of us and our scientists are trying hard to find out the origin and the possibilities of life which was evolved during the process of evolution. So this exhibit talks about the, the possibilities which scientists have probably find during their explorations in the oceans. They have seen that there are certain extreme environments where the life could have evolved. So these extreme environments are found in the oceans and a deeper ocean depth. The life which are originated or the life which evolved are surrounds to these extreme environments are has given a clue to the scientists that this might be a possibilities where the life could have evolved. Also we have certain fossilized informations, fossilized samples which also gives us the clue about the origin of life. These fossilized information is not in the actual fossil samples but they are just like the samples which can be seen on the hard surface, hard sedimentary rocks. These small impression over the hard sedimentary rocks gives the clue that life might have evolved in microorganism form and these samples which you can see in the exhibits are known as the stromatolites. These stromatolites are the small impressions which are formed by the microcellular life on the hard surface and over the period of time these impressions are being uh, uh, covered through the mud or through the crust of another layers and these layer by layer depositions has been entrapped and after the excavations the scientists find out the impressions and this gives us the information that life could have evolved through this micro uh, structure or micro uh, organism life forms. This is the micro organism life. So this exhibit whole in totality is trying to give the uh, insight about the origin of life and once we know that the life has evolved in the microcellular form, so we have the curiosity that how this life has been diversified. So the another section comes to that how the simple life or the micro life has been become a so complicated forms and which gives the later evolution of different species. This exhibit talks about life simple to complex. As we all know that all our life is made up of cells and these cells, how these cells has got evolved. So at the primitive stage if we see that the cells are single cellular form. Since in single cellular it is not very complex. It lacks certain elements which we are presently known. So how these simple cells get diversified into the multiple cell. So this exhibit gives a glimpse about the cellular life evolutions. How the single cell which we call as the prokaryotic cell and how the prokaryotic cell further get replicated and how the ex the elements of cell gets evolved. So we call the complex cell as the eukaryotic cell. You can see that in the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell there are multiple differences. In the prokaryotic cell you cannot see the mitochondria because this is a simple cell. It does not have that uh, uh, the mitochondria function. It only has the outer cellular structure as well as the nucleus. But in the, in the uh, eukaryotic cell you can see that there are nucleus and it also have the property to replicate and it can do multi, uh, multi-functional aspect has been associated with the complex cell. So this exhibit gives a glimpse that how the simple cellular life gets formed into the complex cellular life and it further gives us the conclusion that how this multicellular lives get diversified into number of species. So this exhibit one by one if you touch these sensor points you will see that 
there are you can uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the content of the prokaryotic or single cellular life and what are the content of the multicellular or the complex cellular life and you can see the location of all these elements inside the cell and which can easily identify by the visual impression as well if you see the simple cell it is only having the outer membrane and very few elements but in the multicellular life you can see there are membrane and along with that there are, there is a huge nucleus there are so many uh, mitochondria bodies are there lysosome is there ribosome is there so there are multiple elements which helps to get multi function of from the cells itself so this exhibit definitely will definitely gives a uh, provides a curiosity among the visitors as well that how the life origin has been uh, made through the cell and how the simple cell goes to the multicellular functions this entire section of the gallery is dedicated to show the contribution of one of the famous naturalist or we call as the father of evolution charles darwin charles darwin as we all knows is has been uh, remember for his contribution to develop the theory of evolution this section is highlighting some of the glimpses and some of the highlights points from the darwin's discovery and darwin contribution so this section gives us the information about the the major expeditions that Char charles darwin has made through the hms beagle so the young ja young charles darwin has traveled from the england which is known as the plymouth from plymouth he took some uh, uh, number of people accompany the charles darwin and they have started an expedition to explore the coastal lines through the globes and he has started with the aim that he should collect he should explore that how the life was found on different different continents so through the journey of 5 years on hms beagle darwin has explored many life forms and he collected many samples of the fossils and through the fossilized evidence he comes to a conclusion of number of principles which we presently itself is a basis for the further evolutions so one of the major contribution which darwin has made through this expedition is the exploration which he made on galapagos island galapagos island was very spectacular spectacular about the variety of life which was only found over on this island darwin was amazed during that time that there are so many species which are which was nowhere found on any other continent or any other island but it was only specific to this particular island so he was curious to know that why why the life was strict to that particular island only darwin has took lot of fossilized samples he took lot of information about the geological locations of those fossil samples he observed many creatures which was unique to that particular island and out of the creature which he explored is the darwin finches which we known as the the which was further given the clue about the adaptation or the natural selection so darwin has seen that there are many birds there are many birds who are coming to the galapagos island they have different beak shapes he has found and he has explored darwin uh, finches we call it as the darwin finches and he observed many dar finches which have different shapes of their beaks so he further identify he further wants to make a conclusion that why the shapes of these beaks are different from others so he through the process of his exploration he comes to the conclusion that due to the favorable conditions which were there on the island the shape and the the shape and the adaptability of this particular species is supported by the environment so there are 14 species if you can see once you press this switch you can see there are many species which have the uh, habit of taking fruit as their food habit so if they eat the fruit the shape of the beak is of certain kind and if they have the food habits like they will take the cactus 
so their shapes is of that nature so based on the food habit or the the conditions which were favorable on that particular climate the nature itself has given that particular shape of the beaks so based on these evidences based on these fossilized information or the observation which he made on the island he given many theories about the uh, uh, suppose one theory which was more prominent is the uh, theory of natural selections as well as the theory of adaptation how the species get adapted and those who adapt to that particular environment they survive otherwise they have to wipe out from the en environment so these particular sections is dedicated to the charles darwin his theory his uh, publication which was main Uh, 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 highlight the contribution which he made throughout the journey of hms beagle and what are the information he has collected that was properly documented in the publication origin of species so we we have the visual information in the form of a documentary which was published and which are in public domain and we are showing and visitor can get a glimpse of the darwin contribution in the theory of evolution this exhibit is on cosmic evolutions when we get into the gallery on hall of evolutions the basic story line starts from the evolution of our existence so once we know about the existence then only we can talk about the how the evolutionary process further expands in the process of understanding the uh, evolution we starts with the how the matter came into existence so these we all are made up of the matters we all are made up of the uh, matter which have the it uh, which have uh, the evolutionary history so when we see from our past we know about the big bang phenomena big bang happens and the matter gets expanded and through the interval of time we can see how the different celestial objects like our milky ways our stars our planets how they get into the shape which we now known before when we go into the, our past we will see that there was a big explosion happen in our uh, uh, universe we known as the big bang and when we see that after the big bang the explosion there are certain there are huge amount of matter comes out of it and that matter gets settled and it takes certain forms of celestial objects like the evolution of our stars the first star how the first stars came into picture thereafter the stars then the galaxy formation and there is a sequence of these evolutions so the, from the stars to the galaxies to the cosmic expansion further accelerate and it gives the shape of our solar system and through the solar system we goes to our unique planet which we call as the earth and why the earth only supports the life so this is a sequence or uh, this was the connecting link to understand the theory of evolutions and the process which takes place in our past and which also gives us a clue to step in into our future also so this exhibits is having a interactive slider mechanism you can just slide from one end and you can see with the visuals or the dis, uh, visual information that how at a certain period of time the expansion happened in our cosmos which gives the shape to our stars our galaxies our solar systems so this entire exhibit this entire section of the gallery is talks about the beginning phase of the evolution or from the universe point of view homologous character this exhibit is dedicated to know our to know about the human ancestors as the human always try to find out about their past so this exhibits talks about certain similar characters which we shares with other species there are if we see the human anatomy we can see that there are certain pattern of our bones which are interconnected to our body and if we see the anatomy of different species we can see that there are certain similar uh, way of connection in the bones like if we see in the human 
in the cat in the whale and in the bat we can see that there are certain uh, similarities in the bone structures but still the functions of all these all these organs of different species are different like human hands are used for holding in the same way the legs of the cat is used for walking we can see the anatomy of these two have certain similarities but still they have the different functions so through these kind of informations we the scientists have understood that there are certain characters which are similar but still they have different functions so through this similar construction of our bones we can go to a conclusion there that there might be certain ancestors or maybe the humans comes from a certain species so how from which species the human came into existence so these are certain uh, certain curiosity points where the humans wants to know that who are our ancestors so this exhibit shows certain homologous characters or homology of different species which gives us a conclusion that we we share certain uh, characters with other species like if you see that this is a bird and this is a bat although the bird and bat wings looks similar but they have uh, although the construction if you can see that the function of the wings of bat and wings are same but their constructions are different so we do not call these as the homologous character they are the analogy we can draw the analogy from the bird wings but if we see the uh, bone structure we can see that there are certain characters which there are certain characters which are similar but with different functions so those characters are known as the homologous character and which takes to a, a next step to understand our human ancestries human ancestors the exhibit talks about the ancestry of we as a human we all wants to have a certain pre assumptions that we came from the apes the human wants to know that whether we are the we came from the apes or not so this exhibits highlights some of the key information about the human ancestry as we already told you that there are certain characters which we shares from other species so there might be certain anatomical connections or from uh, through which we can get a clue that we have some ancestors so here in the exhibit we can see the human lineage how the human lineage evolved so we can see that there are many there are many uh, uh, split in the human lineage chart one goes to the gibbon other apes we call as the great apes other goes to the gorilla then we comes to the bonobos then chimpanzee then the humans so we can see that based on the characters which we closely shares with other apes we can see that the chimpanzees is one creature which from which the human shares about 98% of the characters so we can get a information that we are close to chimpanzee but we cannot surely say that chimpanzees are our ancestors so this is the information about that how humans gets evolved and what is our lineage from where we comes to the final form of human being which are the total group of homo sapiens so this exhibit will give some uh, fossilized some uh, replicas information about the different uh, species like the apes which we known as the gor orangutan gorilla gorilla hand and different organs of the gorilla and gibbon you can see the shapes of all these different apes are much similar to human beings but we cannot comes to a final conclusion that we came from the apes so this information shares the human ancestors this section of the gallery gives the information about the hominid evolution as we all knows that human beings are the variants of hominid hominids is a large section of human evolution and if we see that 
this particular display of different skulls belongs to hominids but if we see the evolution of this hominids we will see that it starts from the first hominids which we call as the australopithecines australopithecines group further gets evolved into the homo groups so the ability of human beings to walk on two legs and the ability of the human beings to uh, to to walk to uh, be straight on the two legs are comes in a sequence of evolutionary process so if we see the human history chart we can see that australopithecus group is having the skull which is not very similar to the homo group but it have certain kinds of uh, certain kind of similarities which we can see that through the process of evolution the similarities or the differentiation in australopithecus group and the homo hominid group so the, uh, the we can see that this is the homo sapiens which is present we known as the homo sapiens which we all are and if we go back into this group we can see that the shape of the skulls and the information which was collected through the fossils we can see there are difference in the skull constructions the jaws and different kind of anatomy of the skulls so this particular display in the gallery gives a information about the interconnection between the uh, different hominid creatures from australopithecus to the homo sapiens as present man this section of the gallery is on early human life as we are going into the gallery we have seen different different sections and one curiosity which we wants to know about our humans is uh, is to know about our life for uh, second this section of gallery is on early human life as we knows that human life in earlier times is not as simple as we now the the life of the early humans was very difficult and they have to fight for their bread and butter the the food the availability of food the availability of shelter is not very comfortable for the was not very comfortable for the human being but during the process of time during the process of uh, evolution the human gets civilized in the exhibit we have shown the four major sections or major path phase uh, path break discovery which helps to civilized the human being one of the discovery is the life which the human being used to live or used to live was on trees we knows that the early human being was living on the trees they eat the fruits and they will they uh, once the fruits of the trees gets over they have to come down and they have to find some animals or some creatures which they can eat so initial era human uh, human has to eat the raw flesh with the raw flesh lot of diseases they was acquired so in this process they have also evolved many stone tools through the use of tools the the hunting becomes much easier for them they have started tools to hunt the animal to remove their skins and to make their life better to get survive for a longer durations so the uses of tools also one of the journey one of the path breaking journey in the human history and when they have started using the tools you, we they have they have comes to a uh, to uh, cook their flesh so they evolved the fire the fire the evolution of fire gives them a, uh, gives them a civilized life where they can uh, cook their food they can use the fire for protecting themselves from the wild animals and through this uh, through the use of fire the life of the human being becomes more uh, comfortable than previous one and thereafter when we talk about the life they further gets used of the uh, use of the caves 
some shelter they have prepared they also started animal husbandry they have uh, they have uh, taken some of the animals which they can uh, they can domesticate them and through the use of domesticated domestication they have started the farming and through farming they further get civilized and their life become more uh, more advanced and this was a journey which talks about how from the stone age to the present age the life of human was get transformed so this sections also shows some of the tools these are the original tools which was placed here to give the visitor a, a glimpse that what the shape of the these tools and how these tools helps the human to become them more civilized in, from their past to the present geological time scale as we have seen in this gallery of hall of evolution we have to know about the time in which we are talking since the evolution process is a huge time phenomena it was not happened in a day or in a month but it was happened through the series through a, uh, a time journey and this particular information was well presented in the graphics form as well as an interactive format where we can talk about the time how we can know about the time where these all evolutionary process all evolutionary happenings was take was taken place in our past so we can see that the time was divided into certain kind of epoch period era and eons and since the time was so vast that we cannot uh, count in number of days number of years but this has to be counted in million years it was the happening of million years so for from this representation in the gallery the visitors can easily make an analogy or make an interpretation that since today we will if we want to see the time we have the watch through the watch we can see the time in seconds minutes and hour through the calendar we can see the time in days month and year but the geology of earth if we want to see then we require certain kind of interpretation or certain kind of scale which can show the thousand of year time millions of year time as well as billion of year time so this particular demo this particular representation in the gallery is talking about the timeline of the human history or the geological history of our earth so in this entire gallery when the visitors comes to see that the evolution the process of evolution how we know about the evolutions these certain questions which every one of us wants to know and this gallery definitely will give them a treat will help the visitors to at least go through different processes different happenings different point of observations by different group of scientists and what is their hypothesis what is the conclusions and how they can predict the future of human beings or the other life forms so this entire gallery on human evolution hall of evolution is definitely be helpful for our esteemed visitors of nehru science center to see the evidence based information through the fossils original fossils there are many original fossils which are placed in the gallery to give the glimpse of about past and how the scientist or the special group of scientists like paleontologists geologists archaeologists how they drive the information through this fossils and they give make the hypothesis or make the conclusions and make the further exploration to find the answers to our curiosity and definitely we we would love to get the feedback of our visitors through this exhibitions and we will try to make more and more popular exhibitions to uh, address the human curiosity in the form of this spectacular demonstrations thank you so much